In this video, we're going to focus on the HP App Catalog. Now, the App Catalog, the equivalent to the App Catalog on the Apple iPad 2, is Apple's App Store. The analog to the HP App Catalog on an Android device is the Android Marketplace. Basically, it's the place where you're going to get all your apps, all your programs that you're going to be able to put on the tablet device here. So in order to get there, what you need to do is go to your launcher bar at the bottom, your quick launcher bar, and go all the way to the right and you're going to see an arrow pointing up. Click on that and it brings up your launcher here. This is basically your control center on the device. Now you have your apps, your downloads, your favorites, your settings. You can click on any of those headings and go there or you can just swipe over. We're going to swipe over to the download section where the HP App Catalog resides. It's right here. Now, as you can see, I've downloaded several apps on here, and uh, we'll go through those in a second. One thing, or one thing that's notable, one of the apps that's not notable here is Angry Birds, probably one of the biggest name uh, apps on the device here, and it is actually a full screen app. But as I said before, we're going to get into that in a second. What I want to do first is go to the HP App Catalog. So I'm going to click on that right here, and it's going to bring up the interface here. Now there's a bunch of different categories that you can select from. Your splash screen that you see here is the HP WebOS Pivot. It's a discovery issue July of 2011. Now what this is, it's actually a magazine that is exclusive to the HP App Catalog and it covers important apps, notable apps that are in the App Catalog. So you swipe over to the side and it gives you a little overview of what uh, the thrust of this magazine is, this online pivot magazine. And it's basically, like I said, devoted to the apps that are on the device. And it highlights different apps. You can swipe through here and it shows you different apps, um, what they think of it, um, just notable apps that you might want to look at. Here's, a, here's one that's highlighted, Jump Cuts. It says, Pass the Popcorn and Put Oscar-Winning Epics, Sci-Fi Thrillers, and Summer Hijinks in Your Lap with HP Movie Store Powered by Roxo, Roxio Now. So this is an app that you can actually launch from here. Basically just an interesting way to highlight apps in their app store here. Okay. Okay, the next selection down below here is Categories. I'm going to click on that. And this is going to show you all the different categories of apps that are available in the HP App Catalog. Right now, all apps is selected, but the different um, categories that you have here, I'll read them off to you real quick here. Books, business, education, entertainment, finance, food, games, health and fitness, lifestyle, music, navigation, news, photography, productivity, reference, social networking, sports, travel, and weather. So those are all the different uh, categories of apps that you can find on this device. And then up top you also have a couple of other uh, categories here. You have featured apps, which are selected here. You also have paid apps, free apps, and new apps. So WebOS offers a lot of apps that you can download on your device. Now everybody knows that the Apple App Store has the most of amount of apps in it. The Android Marketplace has a lot of apps in it, second only to the Apple App Store. A lot of the major, major apps that you find in the Apple, I, the Apple App Store, you're going to find in the Android Marketplace. The same isn't necessarily true on the HP App Catalog. You're going to find a lot of apps, but you're not going to find apps like words for friends. You're not going to find apps like Shazam. Now an app like Shazam, pretty much everybody knows about it. You would imagine it is everywhere. Let me show you here. I have it pulled up on the website, actually the Shazam website here. You can get it on the iPhone and iPad Touch. You can get it on Android. You can get it on Blackberry. You can get it on Nokia phones, which I guess is Symbian. You can get it on Windows Phone 7. You can get it on Windows Mobile 6 and, of course, the iPad. But you can't get it on this device, and that's unfortunate because I really, really like this device. I think it's, as far as user interface goes, I think WebOS is head and shoulders 
above iOS and above Honeycomb. But the problem is, is that a lot of the apps aren't there. So that's a weakness in WebOS that you should be aware of. However, like I said before, there are a lot of apps available. Just be aware that the app catalog isn't as deep as the other two devices. Now hopefully that's going to change with time. Supposedly HP is going to allow WebOS to be placed on third-party devices. Supposedly HP is talking with Samsung and Samsung might come out with a tablet running WebOS, which I think was a great idea because the more devices, the more manufacturers you have an operating system on, the more potential that operating system has to grow bigger and when you have a larger install base then the apps will come. Okay, so when you're in the App Store you can select one of these categories. I'm just going to go to Health and Fitness over here and it's going to bring up all the health and fitness apps as you would expect and I'm just going to scroll down and let's see if I can pick one here that uh, let's just hit track my weight. Now as you can see here you have like I said the categories over here and all the apps over here. Um, I want to learn more about track my weight. Now if I want to learn more about it I could just click on it. If I wanted to just download it I'd go over here to where it says free and click on it but I'll show you that in a second. It's going to click on track my weight and what it's going to do it's going to bring up a full description and any of the reviews that are here so it's mostly positive 93 percent which is pretty good and it gives you the compatibility here the version uh, when it was updated and the size and it gives you a couple of options here share developers apps support and report a problem and then it gives you a description here and a screenshot of what you're dealing with over here and then what your reviews are down here you have positive and negative reviews here now also you'll notice at the top here you can download it here by hitting that free button if it was a paid for app it would show the price up there and then next to that is a bookmark button. I'm going to click on the bookmark button and I'll show you what that means in a second. Now also if uh, you know I could download it from the previous screen so I'm just going to hit the back button here and show you what I'm talking about. It brings me back here and it was track my weight. I'm going to click on the free button here and it shows you the downloading process. It already downloaded, it installed it. I get a notification up here that it's installed it's ready to go. I can launch it from here or I can launch it from my launcher. Now remember that bookmarks I told you about? If I didn't want to download that but I thought it was an interesting app, I could have bookmarked it. Or as I did here, I bookmarked it and downloaded it. But as you can see down here, the next category over here are bookmarks. So I go over there and you see there's nothing there. That's because I downloaded it. Let me go back here, back to the categories again, and show you uh, just the next one here, Wendy's Weight Watchers Calculator. I'm going to click on that, and then I'm going to bookmark this. Brings up the description screen here. Remember the bookmark button here? I'm going to click on that. I'm going to go back, and then I'm going to click on bookmarks. Now it says here I have one bookmark. It shows you here, Wendy's Weight Watchers Calculator. Now, as you saw there, I bookmarked something and then downloaded it. Once it was downloaded, it was removed out of the bookmarks. But since I have not downloaded this app, it's still in my bookmarks. So what I could do is either download it and it would be pulled out of here, or what I could do is manage the bookmarks from here. And what I would do is just click on this bookmark icon over here, and it removes it out of my bookmarks. So see how that works? It's pretty interesting and it gives you a good way to you know if you're combing through the app catalog and you see something that catches your eye but you're not necessarily wanting to download it uh, or you want to learn more about it and you want to earmark it it's a good way to do that and the last selection here is the search icon and I'll show you here we'll look up Shazam and hit enter and it's going to look up in the app catalog and it's going to bring up nothing so again, some important apps are missing out of the device here, but like I said before, I really like WebOS. After using it, uh, you know, I'm going to get into, into that later when I actually do my review on the device, but the, the user interface is really second to none, and I just hope that the app catalog grows. 
Now I know that HP has big plans for WebOS. They want to actually include it on their computers, on their HP computers. And I think that would be great. Uh, I know they want to use it as a, an environment within Windows, so it's not going to be a dedicated WebOS computer per se. But the more people that use WebOS, the better, because like I said, the more people that use it, the bigger the install base, the more apps are going to come. So that gives you an idea of what's in, available in the app catalog. Now I'm going to go over a couple of the apps that I've already downloaded. So let's go back to the launcher here. And as you can see, I have Angry Birds, Translator, Engadget, and several others. Let me click on Engadget. Now as you can see, the Engadget app is the mobile app. So you get a small representation of one of the HP phones. Looks like the HP Pre. And it takes up a small piece of screen real estate here. As of right now, I don't know of any way that you can actually enlarge it, make it double like you can on an iPad. Um, it doesn't scale up like a lot of the mobile phone apps do on Android tablets. They just scale up on their own. Uh, some don't, but some do. Uh, so I really don't know how that works as of yet. But this virtual representation of the phone, as you can see, you have the gesture area down here. This gesture area works just as if it was on the phone. So as you saw here, I had the menu down here, and if I just swipe up on the gesture area, the menu goes away. So it's a, it's a representation of the phone. It's, it's pretty cool, but there's no way to make it uh, you know, fill up the entire screen real estate on the tablet here, which is somewhat of a drawback. I'd rather go to the Engadget website, which is probably a little bit easier, and it makes this app kind of obsolete on this tablet. So let me throw that away here and go back to the apps here. And I'm going to show you, since I'm not too happy with that Engadget app, I'm going to show you how you delete apps. You can do it one of two ways. You can do it like you do it on an iPad, where you long press on it, and you see all the icons and they have an X in the upper left hand corner, just like on an iPad. The only thing different here is that they're not vibrating. The icons aren't vibrating. So if you wanted to get rid of the app, you could click on the X there. The other way to do it, let's click out of the, the selections there. The other way to do it is go to settings and go to the software manager here. Now the software manager is going to bring up all the apps that you have on your device. And let's go to the Engadget app here. Click on it. And as you can see, it gives the version, the size, review app, report a problem, or delete. And you can delete it from there. So let's click delete. Delete application. Are you sure you want to delete this application from your device? Delete. Gone. Okay. So that's how you delete an app on the device. Now, just so you know, not all of the apps on here are made for the mobile. Some of them scale up, some of them work on the tablet device here. I'm going to show you Translator HD. And this is a program that actually uses Google Translate. And as you can see, it's a full screen app here. Now, one of the things I'll get into at a later, uh, in a later video is some of the things in WebOS you have two panes here. You have one pane here, which happens to be the history pane, and then you have the other one here, which is your translator. If you want this translator area to take up the full screen, there's an area here at the bottom where you can just drag it over and have it take up the entire screen. If you want to bring it back and bring the history back, you just drag this over to the side here. It's available in a lot of apps on WebOS. This just happens to be one of them. But I just wanted to show you that not all apps on here are not full screen. There's a lot of full screen apps that are available on this device. So that's pretty much an overview of the HP app catalog. If you have any questions or comments, please place them down below. And that pretty much does it for this video. So I will see you next time.